When you think about it, War Thunder is pretty lenient when it comes to adding vehicles. Some would argue a bit too lenient, but I digress. There are some vehicles that simply should not be added, whether that be because they're too powerful or not powerful enough. In this video, we'll be focusing more on the former. Just to clarify, not all of these are hard no's. If Gaijin decompresses the game a bit, maybe it adds more powerful vehicles, I think some of these could work. A few of these are highly anticipated, but I hope I don't upset you guys too much. Like with other videos of this type, please leave vehicle suggestions in the comments. Anyway, let's jump into it. The first vehicle is a German tank destroyer from the Cold War. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce its full name, so I'll use the abbreviation. This is the TVT Panther, a very unique ATGM carrier. During the 90s, Britain, France, and Germany were interested in so-called giraffe tank destroyers. Using a huge elevating arm, the vehicle could raise the missile launcher above obstacles like buildings or trees. This would allow it to engage targets while keeping the crew safe. If you're familiar with the M901, this is essentially that concept, but taken to the extreme. Britain created their own version based on the Challenger MBT, but it never made it beyond being a scale model. The TVT Panther was based on the chassis of the Leopard 1. At 41.5 metric tons, it didn't weigh much more than the base version. The arm could be extended to a height of nearly 13 meters, and had a total of 8 PARS-3 missiles. PARS-3 is a fire-and-forget multi-purpose missile. There are good reasons to avoid adding the TVT Panther. Foremost is obviously the elevating launcher. There are some similar ATGM vehicles in War Thunder, but even when they're hulled down, they can be destroyed with the correct ammunition. If a TBT Panther is firing missiles at you from over a building, and you hit the launcher with high explosive, he's still practically invincible. He might not be able to fire for a bit, but there's still no way to kill him. Not without driving around his cover. Second, no tank in War Thunder uses fire and forget missiles. On a ground-based platform, PARS-3s could be extremely powerful. Imagine you're crossing an opening with your teammates, then a launcher pops up, fires a missile at each of you, then ducks behind cover, all before you can retaliate. Next is the BMPT, a heavy Russian IIV. This is one of the anticipated vehicles I was talking about. Players have been asking for the BMPT for a long time now, but in the current climate, I think it would be a bit too unbalanced. In urban environments, Russian armored forces have typically had a very rough time, even more so than most other nations. Their MBTs have very limited traverse angles, so if a target's in a tall building like a high-rise, they can't really engage it that well. In conflicts like the First Chechen War, this has led to very heavy losses. Though the concept of the BMPT predates this, and was conceived to suppress NATO anti-armor teams, it was believed it could help remedy the CQC problem. As such, they sped up work on a vehicle that would escort tanks. It wouldn't carry troops like an IFV, but it would have two things. Overwhelming firepower, and solid protection. Instead of a large main gun, it would use autocannons with high degrees of elevation. For armored threats, it would also have ATGMs. Eventually, a vehicle based on the T-72 chassis was created. In addition to two 2A4 230mm cannons, it was also armed with four attack of missiles. Since the 2A4 2 isn't dual feed, one gun would fire AP, while the other would fire HE. No, that isn't a joke. As far as protection, it wound up using Relict on the front, and Contact 5 on the sides. It also features a low-profile turret, which for War Thunder is the crux of the issue. Much like the German Martyr, the BMPT could fire its armament from behind cover, without exposing the crew. The difference is that while the Martyr is pretty easy to kill otherwise, the same cannot be said for the BMPT. The turret would survive direct hits from high explosive shells, and the ammo isn't nearly as easy to hit. The hull would also be strong, withstanding hits from most top-tier MBTs. And like the BMP-2M, it would be able to fire its ATGMs on the move. If you guys thought the BMP-2M or AGS were bad, the BMPT is like those two combined, and on steroids. And finally, an American anti-air vehicle, the T-249 Vigilante. Unlike the other vehicles mentioned so far, this one wouldn't be too powerful. Quite the opposite, actually. It used a 37mm Gatling gun, and I imagine most of you guys are sold just hearing that, but it's not as great as you would think. Its ammunition supply was extremely limited, being fed from 192 round magazines. I don't know what total ammo capacity was, but it likely wasn't great. It normally fired at 3000 RPM, but for use against ground targets, it could be slowed down to 120 RPM. Since it's funny, I think most people would use the faster option. As funny as I think the Vigilante would be, I don't think it's a good fit for War Thunder. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you have your own suggestions for tanks that should not be added, leave a comment. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.